happens even while in the moment, you know, like it's so many questions. Um, and again, the reason that I allow myself to dive into all of these things is because I want material for my books. <laughs> Um, you know, because like a lot of times material for my books come from like my real life experiences and I sort of switch things up here and there beyond just changing names. I, I sort of like flip things around, but like it's it's more fun when I'm getting material, not just from my experiences, but from like real life conversations like this. So thank you. Hey, you're here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're having fun. I hope you're enjoying this because I'm, I'm having time in my life. I, I feel like this is... Just- to talking with you and it's funny because i i don't think i expected you to be fast mouthed like this like like you, you, ain't, your YouTube you ain't seen nothing yet babe <laughs> <laughs> what did you what did you expect that's a that's a great question i'm trying to uh, we got to ask the question on twitter too so i'm pulling up the twitter questions for us um what, what was your I expectations coming into this I already knew that it was going to be a really good vibe. Like we never met each other before, but the energy is always so powerful, even just on text, like on Twitter, you know, you're, you're really good people. Like your heart is so big and I love you. <laughs> this is here. This, this is going to be, this is going to be the, uh, this is going to be the thumbnail, right? Just a little. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I mean that I really do. So thank you. I hope you're having a good time. I appreciate it. I, I, this is going yeah. pretty much exactly how I thought it would. I knew we were going to have a good time. I knew there would be smiles. I would hope you wouldn't be offended by anything and we would be able to get, like dig in and have these type of conversations. Oh, I think it's yet. been great. Not yet. <laughs> not yet offended. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so here's here's the next, the, we're, the, the next segment that we're going to get into is going to come from Twitter, right? So uh, Skid, yeah. Shout out to Skinny. He's actually a rapper from Nigeria. Uh, he chimed in and he said, what do you do in a situation where your kinks are not the same kinks as your partners? Right. So I want to start this off by putting you on blast. What are your kinks? First of all, just so that I don't go off assuming, what are kinks? Cool. A kink is uh, something, a specialty within sex that really, really specifically gets you on. Some examples of kinks that people are into are bondage, um, are water play, like getting pissed on, um, could be <laughs> photography. I'll start, I'll start with myself. So my kinks, my kinks have, have always been with taking pictures and taking videos, right? I've always been an exhibitionist. I like, I like outdoor play, public play, car play, stuff like that. But my big thing is I like nudes. I have group text conversations with my friends where we all share nudes of each other and look at them and stuff like that and give each other pointers on photography and different angles and stuff. Um, I have videos with a ton of my exes that are eventually going to get leaked out. I'm sure as soon as I get famous <laughs> enough, um, but like that, that's the stuff that I'm into. Like once, once my shit hits the internet, I'm just starting to know me fans. Like you won't shame me. I like my shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna get forced into being a successful sex worker. That's, that's just, it's going to happen that way. But those are my kinks. So my conversations leading into a relationship would be like, Hey, I really enjoy taking nudes, right? Is that something that you're into? And if they say no, then I already know that this is probably not going to be a fit because that's like a core of my personality of the things that I like to do. Like if I can't, like if I'm having a bad day, I want you to be sitting there like, oh, he's at work having a bad day. Let me send him some titties. This might make, you know what I mean? Like this, this might make his day a little bit better. I like that shit. That's, that's my love language. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and, and I'm so big on the female body just in general. I love women of all shapes and sizes. I think pussy is one of the most beautiful things in the world. So like for me to really get a chance to like put that into the shit that, that turns me on and gets me going, I couldn't see myself being with somebody who didn't have a similar interest. You know what I mean? Even if it didn't make them horny, but they were just like at least into it a little bit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I so mean, now I, I turn. That. I knew all of that. In terms of like the definition of it, I just wanted to be clear. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, like as you were saying that, I'm so turned on by how how our sexuality is something that we all share, yet we are so diverse in how we express and experience it. And I That's... think it's such a beautiful thing that we need to be more open about and we need to hold on to some more and not, you know, hide and shell up, you know. I, I love 
I love being a sexual person. I just love the energy of sex. I love, I love being alive sexually. I love talking about it. I love writing about it. And I just love, I just would, I, I, I don't know. I just hope that more people, you know, own themselves and own their bodies and not feel like they need to hide all those things, you know? But anyway, to answer your question, um, I'm definitely an exhibitionist. <laughs> I would love to have sex in public. Um, I'd love to film. I would love to have films, you know? Like, we're going to get old. Do you understand that we're going to be gray and yes. wrinkly? <laughs> I would love to watch like season one to 10 of my escapades with my person. No, to be honest. I'm I so can't. happy you said that because no one mentions that. No one ever mentions like, yo, we're not going to look like this forever. And oh. here's my proof. This is my proof of life. Like, look at this is what not. I like. Yes, I wasn't always like this. I used to be somebody like <laughs> I'm so glad yeah. you said it. it never gets talked about. No one ever talks about just the natural aging process and like how it, it's yeah. some people it's dope to have that proof of life dog like now nah, that's dope oh, i like that you said goodness. that right now in my life today i am so pissed off that i don't have videos from when i was a child i feel like if i had videos from when i was a child it would help me as i am uncovering and understanding who i am today and i'm so jealous of you know the new generation like this kids who have filmed every single second of the day TikToks you know? on everything yeah it's like you couldn't escape yourself when you get older they will show you <laughs> what you did i wish i could see myself so that i could understand why i love the things that i like why i talk the way that i talk why i'm interested in this and that you know um so when i am with my person and when i do have a partner definitely filming um in in another life, I'll probably be a porn star, um, or probably be maybe I don't know. In another life, I'll put maybe not a porn star, but like a an, a sexhibitionist. Is that a word? <laughs> it is now. <laughs> um, I'm totally a nudist. I'm going to have calendars of my. I'm building my body right now in the gym, and I can't wait to like mold it and shape it because I want to take like luscious pictures of my body. Like I feel like art, right? And I want to see how my body moves. I want to see how my ass jiggles. I want to see how my, my tits bounce, you know? Like, I want to see every single thing. And I want, like, angles from here and there and there, you know, like, the whole sh thing. And so that sex room in, in my house that I'm telling you about, me and my husband, that we're going to have, it's going to have cameras and stuff. And we're, oof. ah, God bless him. <laughs> We're going to take a brief intermission. We'll be back in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so answer, so to answer his question then, right? Um, what do you, he, so like I said, this is an artist from, from Nigeria. A huge shout out to Skinny. Um, his question is that he's currently in this situation. So this isn't a hypothetical. He's in a situation where he's, he has a different kink than his partner. They don't have the similar, the same kinks. So yeah. how, how do you, in your opinion, maneuver that situation i think i told him to cheat so that's probably not the best advice so we're hoping oh, that you no, have a, a you have a better ex what is your problem <laughs> i'm what not a good it? person like i never claimed to be a good person i just i'm honest <laughs> that's not good advice please don't take that advice <laughs> i mean if you're with someone that you have chosen to be with i mean you make this choice right Mm -hmm. every single i think this is something that we really overlook a lot of us we overlook the fact that there is choice in every single step of making a relationship happen it's like building a business every single day it's a, it's a daily conscious decision to make a choice and because this person is your partner you sort of have to make choices together of course you're going to disagree but you disagree to agree is how i is how i think about it and so if your thing is not their thing then what is our thing becomes a question how can we then discover what our thing is together because just because you have a certain kink right now doesn't mean that you cannot create more you get what i mean you can create more you can discover more about yourself. i like that i like that yeah i mean the so way i mean you found out that you had this particular kink you could find out that you have something else and that's find genius it out together, so. i like that a lot <laughs> i like that a lot um <laughs> developing kinks together all right so let's let's i'm gonna play devil's advocate though right so let's say let's say the situation is this right person a and person b are together and their lives are very very succinct right both of them have similar ambitions 
Both of them have similar life goals, good jobs, independent, whole nine yards. But when it comes to their sex life, there is the kink disconnect. And in order to get to that point where we can develop kinks together, we still have to have a healthy sex life first to put ourselves into a position to discover those. So I guess my question is, in the event that everything else looks good, except for the sex life kink part, what is your opinion then? What is your advice? Look, sex is such an important part of a relationship. Like it is such an important part of the relationship, right? But the kink is just one part of the sex. Mm -hmm. So in that situation, let's not forget all the other amazing parts of our, our, our sex together. You know, I feel like it's not enough that your fantasies are not, you know, satisfied. It's not enough to discard every other thing. It's just one piece of the entire puzzle that is sex. And we have a lifetime to learn more things. We have a lifetime to enjoy sex. I think that, I think that sex has ranges and it will change as we get older, by the way. And so this idea, first of all, we need to throw it out the window that if somebody is not giving it to us the way we want, then we're going to get it from outside. This is why a lot of people are cheating. But is somebody giving it to us though, you know, like, and how can we have honest, open conversation as adults, you know, with empathy and grace and compassion and just lay the cards on the table. Like, I really love this. If you don't like it, how can you meet me in the middle, you know? And we have a lifetime to keep on making it better and better and better and better. We have a lifetime to fuck, to be honest. But let's fuck a lot today. Let's, let's, so I don't know how I feel about this. I want to I want to stay on this, right? Because I may I may be giving you, you a little pushback. On this? <laughs> I may I may be giving you a little pushback. So like Please give me pushback. Uh, tell let me, me think why. Here. So this is why life so, life is okay. Can go I tell you this first of all? This is why I think this is one of the big reasons that the religious folk hold on so tightly to keep yourself before marriage, you know, like don't have partners or don't have sex before marriage, so that when you have your person, this is the person that you're learning with. I don't necessarily like totally buy into that. I wouldn't be the person that I am today if I didn't make all the fucking mistakes that I made. All right. Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, but that said, I don't know. This, this is this is where we would give a big upper hand to people who actually don't fuck around too much like you, right? So that you don't go mm. learning all these many things and then put all these expectations <laughs> on other people who haven't learned all these many things. You know what I mean? So push push me back. First of all, I agree with that that sentiment. I do agree with that. I do agree with that. Sentiment. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to agree with Why? that. Why? Why do you agree with that? Because I have been in a situation. I've been in multiple situations where I'm with somebody who was a great, just a fantastic person. Um, but the sexual experience difference between the two of us yeah. creates a very vast disconnect. And yeah. it makes, it makes it seem like somebody's a world away. It makes like this person can be the most educated just beautiful mind, beautiful human, but it's just inexperienced in that one realm makes it feel like you're, you're dating somebody that's not in your league. And it, it mm -hmm. creates this feeling like maybe you're too young minded. Maybe, maybe you're not, you know what I'm saying? Like there, it can create, I'm not saying it does. I'm saying it can create that. And it has for me, I've yeah. been with somebody like, I can't be with somebody who's like going to like, ew, licking balls. Like, that's not like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I, I'm, I have no interest in going back to that, that far in my life to mm -hmm. where people are still grossed out by regular sex things. Like, that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. I respect it, but you need to find somebody that's on that level so that you guys can go through those processes together. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even when it comes time, what you're talking about with the religious thing, I don't see nothing wrong with that. If that's what somebody wants for themselves. Right. Yeah. Like every, everybody's journey is going to be different. I would never push my beliefs on nobody. Right. Yeah. I think it's ludicrous. I think it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. I would rather put a gun in my mouth than wait until I got fucking married to have sex. I like, yeah. that's, that's not an exaggeration. Like that's, that sounds like the worst. Could you imagine 
waiting until you got married to find out you don't like the smell of your girl's pussy? Like, that's, there, is there anything worse than that? I can't imagine you spend your whole life with this person and then you find out that they have a penis that can't satisfy you, right? And now you just, the rest of your life, you just stuck with somebody who's like not physically capable of, of whatever your personal needs are. That's like, so like, here, here's my view on this and why I'm going to give you the pushback on, on the portion that I wanted to give you the pushback on now. The kink and side. Like, the, the kink, kink side of things, right? The whole the whole thing. For me personally, and this is coming from experience, not from ideology, right? This is I'm, I'm speaking from my my own personal experiences. Mm. It's not going to work. We as humans are fixated on what we cannot have. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you a million examples of this. Right. So that means because you, you keep on wanting to have it anyways, no matter how the, many conversations. The second you, you tell me I can't have something, I don't want anything else in the world other than that thing that you're trying to keep from me. Right. Gotcha. If, if women wore, someone said, this is my idea. I heard this. This is like a comedian said this before, but it's, it's facts. If women wore gloves all the time, the biggest thing that would be sold would be handpicks. If women were, yeah. if women wore gloves, 24 seven and you've never seen a woman's hands only fans wouldn't be pussy pictures they would be hand pictures because we have been deprived of being able to see hands the whole time right like in a relationship if i'm this is why there are so many sexual predators because the, the minute they tell them you can't have sex until you do this and that and don't have then it becomes i have to have sex i have to go get it you know this is why we have a lot of problems in our society today is exactly what you're talking about and that is, I'm so sorry for cutting you. I just thought That's about right. it. That, that was important when we were talking about like, lay your expectations on the table from the very beginning. Like don't go deep right. into a relationship. And then all of a sudden now our kinks don't match. And so fuck it, this relationship is over. You should have told me on the first date that you were- I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I agree entirely. Right. Like I, I think yeah. that, I think that those conversations, like the, the big thing is conversation. But the reason that I would say to end it is because of the the- the buildup, the more, the longer you go without the thing that you want, the hard, the more you're drawn to it. Right. And it will turn a good person into a cheater. It will like that, that drive, that, that insatiability of like, I have this pool, this thing that I want more than anything, like we're going to get it. And here, and here's why I tell you to give into that. And here's why I say cheat, right? I say it joking, but that is the life that I live my whole life. And I stand on it because of the way, like, None of us are making it out of this alive. I hate to be the one to, to break that to you. <laughs> but we have a very finite amount of time on this mm. earth. This is a blink of an eye. No one's going to remember you. People are going to get wiped out. And none yeah. of this is going to matter. So yeah. while we're here, spend it creating as much bliss as it want. If, you, if the mm. thing that you're into, whether it's sexual, whether it's ambition with like, like your job, whether it's the people that you keep around you, the friends, the family, I mm. encourage people watching this to be more selfish. Stop, don't yeah. spend your life pleasing other people. Don't spend your life trying to conform to other people's kinks that you're not really into. Like yeah. go and find somebody who's on the same journey as you, that's in the same things as you. There are people out there right now, look at furries. There are people who like to dress up like fucking animals and then bark and fuck each other, right? Like, that's a real thing. I'm never going, like, there's no amount of time that I'm going to be with you where you're sticking a tail up my ass and asking me to fucking bark at you and I'm going to be okay with that. But there's a whole community that swears by that. So what I tell you yeah. is if you have a different kink, there is somebody out there for you who likes the same shit that you don't have to try and conform somebody who doesn't know or doesn't like the same shit and, and either make them unhappy because they're a people pleaser. And a lot of times that's what happens is you have like a narcissist will come with an empath and take advantage of somebody who's willing to do things for you and talk them into it. And now you've created this uneasiness and it's like, it's not the same thing as having someone who's genuinely interested in the same shit as you. And no matter how weird and fucking out there your kinks are, there's somebody out there with that likes the same shit. You just got to be willing to to put yourself out there and wait until you find them. That's my opinion. So like, yeah, so don't be with the first person who doesn't like that in the first place. Exactly. <laughs> Which is why we need to talk about it early. I agree. And I, I really believe that the sex, I think sex part, the money part, the communication part, this is why a lot of people break up and this is why a lot of marriages don't last. Um, sexual needs are not met. 
the conversation about money is not had properly. Conversations generally are not had with empathy and compassion, you know, and the sex part, you fuck it up, everything just dies, I think. Um, and this is such an important conversation because I think that there are a lot of people out there who are cheating on their partners just basically, like basically because of basic sexual needs that are not met. Well, and you know what's dope is, about that? You know what's dope about that? Yeah. You can find yourself through communication. You can find yourself avenues to, to reach that happiness, right? So for instance, there's no, like we made this all up. I can't stress this enough. Relationships are not real. Monogamy is not a real thing. We have, <laughs> we have decided on these fake rules that create shit. It's like it's all made up. It doesn't. There's not. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. It should be a man and a woman. That's not real. You made that up. There is nothing in the laws of biology to say that. Period. Right. Like your relationship can look like whatever you want your relationship to look like. My relationship is going to look like me and three women plus who whoever they want to have. Right. Like so, my relationship like. I may, you and I may get together and you may decide you want two husbands. So I'm going to have me and you, and you decide to have another man. I'm cool with that. That doesn't bother me at all because wow. like, I, I'm not bound by any type of mental block that society has put on me. Right. Yeah. But what can happen is say we're together. Right. And you absolutely give me, let's say knife play. Right. So knife play is one that comes up a lot that people are on the fence about because it tends to be a little bit dangerous, right? There are people who like to have a blade pressed against their throat. It helps them orgasm to get that adrenaline running and stuff like that. Let's say you're super not into that. You're like, hey, it's too many, too much opportunity for things to go wrong. Doesn't do anything for me. I'm not gonna get anything out of it. And then we come to an agreement that in, in the event that you wanna go have sex and have this knife play, you are allowed to go and explore other avenues to, to fulfill that need that you have. And then you come back to me. Right. Your other husband, your other husband satisfies your need to be with a black man and have some chocolate in your life. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. But at the end of the day, you come back to me because that's what you end up loving. Like and, and then you just whatever it is, those things are, if, if that's what you decide you want your relationship to look like, if I love everything about you, I'm just not willing to do this one thing. I also don't want to take that from you because it's my job as your partner to make sure your limited years that you're alive on this planet, that you're experiencing everything that you want and it's unending happiness day in and day out, whatever that may be. So mm -hmm. I feel like that can be your relationship too. Like it's, let's say our kinks are different and I want to spend the rest of my life with you, but I need to travel outside of this idea of monogamy to satisfy this primal need that I have so that I can better love you. There's nothing wrong with that if both parties agree. There's nothing wrong with anything in your relationship if mm -hmm. both parties consent to it. And once you learn the power of consent, once you learn how dope that is to have those open conversations, you will quickly weed out the people that you don't need in your life and find the people that you need to keep around in your life. It's that simple, in you, my opinion. You will quickly weed out the people. <laughs> Facts, it's real. Like, yeah. And it, it, But here's the thing. Let's say someone's not as open-minded as me. And they're like, Steve, you're wrong. This is debauchery. But that person's not wrong either. You should find somebody who has that same conservative belief. And there's nothing wrong with it. If you like vanilla sex, if you're a pillow princess, if you're just like the dead fish and lay there and you just want somebody else to do all the fucking work, there is a person that is out there who wants somebody who's just going to lay there so they can do whatever they want to them and doesn't want you to participate. Just find that person, whatever that is. Yeah. That's my, that's my, that's my. I think something important to note, and just, this just dropped in my head, I think, like, first of all, that's very early conversations, like when you just start dating someone, like if the person is not going to be with you when you reveal your scenes, you know, you, you say, okay, right. goodbye. If the person decides to stay, then fine. But in the, in the event that you are now stuck with this, no, well, not stuck, you are now with this person, there shouldn't be any feeling like, oh, this person doesn't love me because they don't want to do this, or this person doesn't care I about agree. me because they don't want to do this, you know, because that, that is such a, a level of expectation that is like, no, don't do that. Have some fucking dignity on your I asked you, you know? I asked you in the beginning of this. You do what? you separate love and sex? And that goes right back to that. 
someone not wanting to have sex with you in a certain way is not an indication of whether or not that person loves you. Someone who doesn't want to participate in whatever kinky shit you're into is mm -hmm. not indicative of whether or not that person loves you. That's a great point that you made. I, I agree with that a thousand percent. So, and, mm -hmm. and people do tend to confuse that people like, Oh, you don't love, you're not going to do like people are manipulative, right? Like people are manipulative. Oh, if you I love me, if you me. love me, you'll do this. <laughs> like, bro, suck a dick. Get the fuck out of here. Like that, that's such, I, I can't believe that that happens, but it works. People do that shit and it works. And then, you, and then that's when things break up and end on bad terms. And that's how you have people who get like that same guy will have a reputation of being a scumbag for the rest of his life in that woman's eyes and whoever she talks to could have looked like a fucking superhero if they had the adult conversations beforehand. And like now, now this, now this, this partnership, now both people understand what it's like to have adult conversations and know, and know what it's like to have somebody meet your level of maturity and respect your boundaries and be able to create this safe space between each other together. You feel me? Safe. That's the key word, safe. <laughs> I feel you. This got real serious, didn't it? This is a good conversation, though. This yeah, is a good conversation. It's like, it had me thinking. It's it's nice to um, jump out of my bubble sometimes because I'm I'm really in my bubble a lot. 